Welcome to Oregon Voters Digest, the program that brings forward the social and political issues that are important to people living here in the Pacific Northwest. And now, your host, Bruce Broussard. Welcome again to this segment of the Oregon Voters Digest. I'm Bruce Broussard, your host. Folks, we've got quite a show today, but at the same time, as I'm sure that all of you received one of these, a voters, voters pamphlet, a voters pamphlet. We're right in the midst, if you will, of exercising our right, and, and, and that is the right to vote. Very, very important. And uh, so we're going to be talking about that. And uh, again, like you, you got your voters pamphlets and this, that, and the other. We're going to be talking about candidates and and issues and this, that, and the other. And I've got, I've got some folks here that's going to be with me. Bob's going to be here with me on an ongoing basis. You, you remember Bob Williams? There he is. There he is, sitting right over here. How you doing, Bob? <laughs> Real good. Bruce. Sounds good. Yeah. And then we got a couple of announcements we're going to make, and we got an, in, an enthusiastic voter, and, and a, a good American. <laughs> and I'm talking about Ovi Montan. And you, you've seen Ovi before. Ovi was here before. In fact, what he was doing, he was sharing with us his dad's book. And Ovi's been doing a real good job. I mean, it's a very neat book. It's an easy reading kind of a book. But someone that basically wasn't living in this country, and now all of a sudden just coming here, I mean, just very patriotic, glad to be here, et cetera, et cetera, and just really, really studied hard and, and before they even got here to make sure that they understood what the definition of what this country is about. And that's what, really what he brought to. But it, it's a very interesting. We did a, we did a piece. Of, you might want to look in the archives, and you can see the interview that I did with, with Ovi. But he did a real good job in this book. This is it right here. And, in fact, you can still get it. Just check it out with the various outlets, and the book is available. And we're going to have over here again to go, just basically go back over the book because it's sometimes a good refresher is always good. Mm -hmm. You got me? Okay. Oh, Thank nice. you. Well, Thank now you. I understand, one, you got a couple of things right here. One, you wanted to come by and, and maybe uh, join the campaign by picking up a lawn sign. Absolutely. You know, you know, I like that and this, that, and the other. And the boy, he's quite a poster on that on that Facebook. Oh, yeah. Oh, he's, he's awesome. He's awesome. He talks about this book all the time, which I think is really great. But the other side, you got a real quick uh, uh, event there that's coming about real quick, right? Yes, we do. Um, Son, son's in the Marine Corps, too. I want you to know that. And a daughter in the Air Force. And the daughter's in the Air Force. Right wow. on the Air Force. All this, right. Let me, let, me, <laughs> let me put this over here. Can, can you get this while, while you, can you get that? It's going to get good. Now, keep not talk about it. Well, so I want to tell you about it. May 5th, uh, which is next Saturday, mm -hmm. we have an event for Notos Battle Buddies. Um, it's our seventh annual dinner fundraiser. And uh, what Notos Battle Buddies is, is actually a nonprofit organization dedicated to serving the veterans with PTSD right. by providing highly trained service dogs to them at no cost whatsoever. That's how I met him. Um, I met him on the yeah. route. Yeah, the and so um, we have an event that uh, it's a three-part event. Um, mm -hmm. uh, first is we want to raise awareness about PTSD right. and what the veterans that come back from right. war, okay. uh, what they go through. Um, the purpose of the event is to actually promote not us battle, but isn't what we do. Okay, okay. And so I want to invite you, as a matter of fact, live on TV, I want to invite you and tell you that we're going to come pure ticket. It's $189, but for you today, because you're going to give oh. me a sign, I'm going to oh. give you a ticket to oh, come my, to the I like, event. I like, I like that kind of a deal. And you have to be there. You can't say no. And guess what? You're going to sit at the table with my father and my mother. I appreciate that. Boy, I've been that wrote the book, I Willing mean, to wow. Die. This guy really appreciates his parents. I mean, I tell you, I mean, I go to Facebook and there he is, you know what I mean? And he's always visiting. They're out in California, right? Mm, yes. So he drives from California to... I mean, at least I look like it's like once a week. <laughs> well, back I wish forth. I could do that. I mean, but he's got to eat, too. He's got to work. He's working. Oh, yeah. He's got a company, and he, he does a heck of a job. Well, good. I tell you what, I will definitely be there because I've been wanting to see mm -hmm. them. Meet them in yes, and please do tell anybody. We still yeah. have seats available. Okay, it's cool. at the convention center. Okay. okay. And Marcus Luttrell, the lone survivor, if you've seen the movie. Wow, yeah. Marcus Luttrell is the only one that survived, mm. uh, and he's the uh, guest speaker wow. that we have that evening. Okay. He's going to come tell the story okay cool and so we're gonna raise some money for uh notice battle buddies so we can provide service more, dogs more to, animals to service dogs. yes good, good, service good. dogs now, is this phone number is this the right phone number that's call, the phone number call, if you want to call that? call 360-601-9744 or go to our website northwestbattlebuddies.org northwest spelled out all together northwestbattlebuddies.org 
Okay, good enough. Hope to see you there. I'll be there, my friend. Well, I tell you what. Promise? We, we'll de hey, I will definitely be there. And thanks again for supporting the campaign. You're yeah, very welcome. Very I, much. Um, thank you for giving me the opportunity okay. to be well, here. I, and hey, I got them lined up right there. Just pick any two you want. Mm -hmm. well, let's see, they all look different. So. Yeah. Thank you so much. Okay, good enough. Thank you. Yeah, thanks very much. You want me to keep this? And yes, please do. And I'll, I'll just hit it again. Mm -hmm. I will. Okay, good. Thanks again, Ovi. Thank you. All right, be seeing you soon, okay? Yes. You get one or two of them. You get two of them. I'll get two of them, yes. Sounds good. You just pick, it, pick another one. Okay. Okay, good. All right. Now, what we're going to do now, we're going to get right into the campaign piece. And then, naturally, um, okay. uh, and, the, and the area that we're focusing on, uh, that we're going to be focusing on, is really Multnomah County. And that's a very huge area because, in all due respect, we're talking about issues here that are very relevant here in the Portland metropolitan area. And when you think about Multnomah County, you're talking about poor people. See, a lot of folks don't realize that. we got the city of Portland as part and parcel of Multnomah County. But when you're talking about Multnomah County, they're talking about poor people, senior citizens, mental illness, uh, some of those issues that are, that are pretty heavy and, uh, and right in front of, uh, and are in definite need. And with the, with, the, with the advent of the homeless problem we have here now, then you really get into the services of mental illness and, and opioids and needles and all kinds of things, you know what I mean, that we have to deal with. So that's what we're going to be focusing on for this whole show. And then one of the things that, uh, come on up, Seth. And uh, one of the things that uh, Multnomah came around, they've just initiated, I, and I like the idea because it talks about how do we get folks who are living here that, that are very familiar with the issues, mm -hmm. very familiar with the issues of poor folks, give them the opportunity to run for office. And I think that's a very neat piece. And, and then Dan Meek, who I'd known for a number of years, you know, had always been involved in that whole finance. And then I met Sid as a result of that. And he's gotten involved in it. Pull your chair up a little bit there, Sid. And so uh, he's going to kind of give us a feel for what that meant, you know, from the standpoint of trying to keep the monies down, that you're not looking at trying to refinance your house or a uh, uh, campaign being bought person being been bought and not really dealing with the issues and that and that in and, and that uh, sort of results in the taxpayers being asked to pay more money for services as opposed to trying to solve the problem right you got my point so so that's one of the reasons why uh, we, we're going to focus on that issue and said has been, been basically he has been working with Dan talking to that piece and so what said so why don't you just kind of just share with them one what was that bill was all about you know that whole cap routine and where it is it today okay yeah, in the uh, in the previous election, there was uh, a Multnomah County measure, Measure 26184. In Multnomah County, the voters passed it by 89% of the vote, and in Portland, by 90% of the vote, which is kind of unheard of. And what it did was it established limits on campaign contributions mm -hmm. and had a transparency requirement that when you publish ads, uh, like uh, okay, let's say that, yeah, okay. Any, any, anything like that, right, right. they would have to say, like who were the, were the top five funders were, if they were donations larger than five hundred dollars. Oh really? So yeah. how many? So, you, so if there were five or ten people or whatever, they still have to identify those individuals. It's just the top five. The top. Of, the top five. Yeah. Okay, but you can be you can be required to you can is still is that still public information that you can ask for the total amount if it's twenty five thousand dollars or something like well, that? Well, it it required that they be printed on the ad. Oh, on the ad. Yeah, directly on the ad. With the top five. For, for the top five, okay. if it was greater than $500. Mm -hmm. But there's a limit, too. And so the transparency provision actually doesn't take effect if the limits are actually working. And uh, the limits are $500, that you can't donate more than $500 okay. to a candidate. Uh, and it applied to, it applies only to county offices. So the county commissioner, uh, the county sure. chair, uh, sheriff and yeah. things like that, okay, okay, but okay. not the local city, none of the city offices. Okay. That's why there's another measure. There's another uh, petition right now. It's not a measure yet because it hasn't okay. qualified. Uh, hoping to qualify for the ballot and become a measure that would do the same thing. It has a few minor tweaks uh, from what we learned from uh, what candidates do when they try to comply with it. Okay. Like a number of ca candidates try to uh, loan themselves money. Mm -hmm. So, uh -huh. in the earlier version, there's no allowance for any loans. Uh -huh. So that be, that might become difficult in the case of if you have like net 30 terms or something. Right, right, right. So we we put a limit on what the loan balance can be at any one time, which right. is five thousand dollars. So is yeah. there is there um, 
anything in this provision that stops uh, me for doing an ad for you without going through your campaign. So it also mm -hmm. also applies to independent expenditures. Mm -hmm. uh, that, as some people may know, th that's the more controversial part of this bill, right. uh, or, or charter amendment in right. the case of Multnomah County. Uh, so independent expenditures are where you don't uh, talk with the campaign and you independently spend money in support of them and it's mm -hmm. not considered a contribution or in-kind contribution. Mm -hmm. Right. It's considered you doing your own thing independently. Mm -hmm. Now this went up to the Supreme Court and you may have heard of Citizens United, which is this famous case which basically said it's all legalized. Now what we're trying to do is we're putting legislation in and it passed with the intent to be uh, to be enforced here and get it challenged potentially it, the expectation was that it would be challenged and we would appeal it all the way up to the Supreme Court to get a reconsideration under uh, but if you looked at the Citizens United decision there were some ways in which you could potentially challenge it like show more evidence of the corruption so on and so forth okay. so we we're doing the work to challenge it all the way to, to the Supreme Court okay. with the the foundation mm -hmm. of why we need to uh, restrict those. But as of correct. now, I can make a personal contribution to a campaign without talking to the campaign. Uh, well, there's uh, the way it was written in this statute, this mm -hmm. charter amendment was there's a, a five thousand dollar limit. Oh, okay. So you could do that up to five thousand dollars. Okay. Okay. Uh, but there are some people who are challenging it because they want to spend a lot more than five thousand mm -hmm. dollars. That's the key. Mm -hmm. And so they're they're challenging it in court, and we'll see how that goes through the process. It first has to get through the Oregon constitutional challenges, mm -hmm. and then it'll get to federal questions. Now the law, as far as the law is provided right now, I understand there's some restrictions now. Is there any, are there any restrictions that they adhere to that law or not? So the law is still on the books. Okay, uh, it okay. passed with, passed. with uh, 89 and 90% of the vote. Right, mm -hmm. right. So, uh, you know, candidates right now, they, you know, some of them are, you know, potentially ignoring that. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. uh, that can be a problem because the will of the voters is obviously don't exactly. do, don't do yes. this exactly even if it's overruled and there was a uh, at the county level there was a, a county circuit ju court judge that uh, that uh, said it was unconstitutional but that's in the process of being repealed mm -hmm. or uh, appealed mm -hmm. and so we'll, we'll that'll go up to the, the court of appeals and then the, the uh, state so what's court. the penalty is there a penalty to the uh, person yeah, that donate or is there a penalty to the candidate? There's a penalty for both. Uh, it's mm -hmm. between 2 and 20x uh, of the amount in question. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a wide range, but uh, it, it was intended to be implemented by an ordinance that went into more detail. Mm -hmm. But the, the county, one of the reasons why it was overturned is because there was some stuff left up to the county, which it chose not to, <laughs> not to actually go into detail yeah. on. And so, so they claimed it was vague. Fighting. But that can be fixed with uh, a proper implementing ordinance. Right, right, so right. we need to get the I county to I want to make sure we to go real quickly because I want to get, because he's monitoring it too. Mm -hmm. And that's the other reason why we wanted him to kind of give us an update on the, on some of the races that are being run. Today. Yeah. That, so uh, usually what, what will happen is somebody will inadvertently, like they didn't know about the rule or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. uh, they didn't know what was going on, accepted a campaign donation. Somebody sent something in, it was over the limit. So they tend to get contacted. Uh, then they will get, uh, you know, usually it will, the money will be refunded. And then, uh, in theory, you could file a complaint at any time regarding that. But mm -hmm. uh, what I've chosen to do is basically not complain with people who appear to be right, trying right, to right, right. Uh, adhere to the spirit. Right, right, right. And educate. So it's, it's right. part, part of education. Well, that's why we're doing yeah. this. That's right. why we're doing it now. Okay. And so, uh, but there was one particular case with, uh, uh, Commissioner Larida Smith, who uh, wanted to run for the city commission, city council, mm -hmm. and uh, there's a charter, there's a separate charter requirement that you have to wait until January 1st to do so. Right. And uh, so she announced on September 12th, and that she intended to run, and in order to get around the the language was trying to avoid doing anything that drew attention mm -hmm. that could be interpreted mm -hmm. as filing or running mm -hmm. and so she's she didn't amend her campaign statement to her statement of organization mm -hmm. to be from county to, to city and was putting large donations in the county accounts mm. and so uh, 
in order to for, you know, violate another section of the charter, she was violating the one that we had just passed. And so mm -hmm. I was like, this is not a problem. This is not right. It's, mm -hmm. it's a problem. Mm -hmm. And so I filed an election law complaint on that, pointing out that these are related issues mm -hmm. and they both should be uh, enforced. Mm -hmm. uh, because in our charter amendment, it said specifically that it's not just the candidacy, it's the campaign account too uh -huh. that you can't put money into. I got you. So if you don't amend it, you're, it's a triggered violation. I see. Regardless of whether or not you're actually intending to later mm -hmm. run for the, the city. Okay. okay. So just collecting money uh, with, the, with the, as they say, look-see for running. Uh, yeah. You collect money. It can't be over five hundred dollars to go into your campaign. Fund. Yeah. Okay. okay. There, there is a, an exception that I haven't brought up yet, which is if you have a campaign account that is restricted to taking only one hundred dollars, mm -hmm. then all the money that goes into that is called the small donor committee. Right. Uh, that small donor committee can then redonate in unlimited amounts and independently spend unlimited in unlimited fashion. Mm -hmm. This allows. Some some place some uh, corporations have an employee account or uh, unions might have a, a pack, a, pack, mm -hmm. a separate uh, committee. If they adhere to these small donor rules, they can uh, with you know they can do what they were able to do with the mm -hmm. yeah. provisions that it's under one hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. And yeah, uh, and that's, a, that's another <laughs> wow wow. I mean I mean but but the, the the whole point here is that not respecting the voters. Yeah. You know, the whole idea was to make sure that, that folks would be allowable to come in and run for office who had the resume, if you will, to deal with the issues. And that's that's a, that's a major problem, as you know. I mean, some well, you're, of you're, you're cost out. Yeah. And, yeah. We, yeah. you know, that's that's one of the things that we, that's the reason why back in the day it was two things we were fighting for, campaign, uh, camp as far as campaigns were concerned, mm -hmm. uh, certain amounts. And as far as uh, the time you stay in office, term limits. Yep, yep. You know, those two things are very important, mm -hmm. you know, to get people mm -hmm. involved. Mm -hmm. Right now we have, a, we have situations where someone gets elected and they don't have to do anything, mm -hmm. just keep their nose clean. Yep, yep. And then they get reelected again. Never and responding to the issues. No, what <laughs> issues? <laughs> you know, and so that's why we have, I call them the lazy uh, politicians in yeah, office today. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's just a job. Yeah. You know, and, and, we ha and we the people have to step out of, our, yeah. out of that dark shadow that we have cast over here and come into the light and let them know that we are here yeah, yeah. and that we are watching. Yeah. You know, no, we will outspend... Uh, Seattle. Seattle has campaign limits, mm -hmm. and uh, so we're like it's five hundred dollars, I believe. So they actually have similar limits to what we propose, and they're spending as much lower than Portland's, and we're much more parochial than Seattle. Mm -hmm. Seattle is a huge place, right? And they're running these campaigns. People are getting elected. There's a lot of you know diversity of input, yeah, right? Right. And uh, everything seems to be functioning perfectly well up in Seattle, but here right in here. Portland, we're spending a million dollars in primary elections in the first round <laughs> of, you know, a mayoral race or uh, in, you know, these city city commission positions, these city, yes. city council positions, right, right. people are spending hundreds of thousands of dollars just in the, the in the first round. By the time they get to the general election, they're, they're, in they're spending massive amounts mm -hmm. of, of money. And, and after, after, after they get to the point where they refinance their house to a point, then they really get bought off then. Well, the other part is, if you make it through the primary, somebody is going to buy you with a large donation. You're going to be obligated to serve someone. You will have a master. And, un and until we get this, under, this financing under control, you know, uh, the people don't have a voice yeah. because they have to go out and get money. Right, and related right. to that, there's this there's this scenario that happens where there'll be a, it's like nobody will get 50 percent in the first round, mm -hmm. so it'll be limited to two on the ballot, mm -hmm. and then there will there will be these corporations mm -hmm. that will donate to both of them. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. So you're down to two choices, mm. and these are what I call access buys. Mm -hmm. You're buying access. Right. And there there are a number of politicians in the city who, where if you go try and get a meeting with them, they will. Uh, 
ignore you basically. Yep. And then you go check their calendar and figure out, well, who's getting meetings? And then you compare it against their donor list. Mm -hmm. And you see there's a correlation between who's a donor. They have to have some, you know, Right. insider access mm -hmm. already and donating is one way I had a friend who was getting ignored by uh, one of the uh, previous people that are not elected anymore but they, they were getting ignored by them and so they thought oh, well I'm just going to donate to them and see what happens and yeah. like to put a donation in next election goes by all of a sudden they have access mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like this this is just how it works here mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it's sad and unfortunate because we you know, supposedly we're in a exactly, democracy. Exactly. Mm -hmm. In fact, another good example that's, that's current right now is Wapato. How someone came in and uh, bid at 10.8, got me? Mm -hmm. And then went back and then said, well, no, I'm going to bid 5 mil. And then another person had bid at about 8, eight. million. Mm -hmm. and, then it, and then all of a sudden they selected the 5. I mean, just common sense would say, well, take the 8. I mean, I'm just, just, I'm just on the surface. And but the idea, like you said, I've not been able to look at the donors list yet, mm -hmm. but I'm sure that uh, the, the person or someone would, would have access to that vote. Right. Can I ask you a question on yeah, that? Yeah. I don't want to get off the subject, yeah, but sure. now the person that got it for the five million after bidding ten over ten or eleven, got it for five, brought the guy in that bid at eight, in for five million, so he's not out of anything. The, for the guy that well, got it well, isn't out of anything. He got his five million back by bringing the guy in for 40, 50 or sixty percent of the deal. No, well, well actually, you, you never know how much it is because the deal is was he was the deal. After he got the deal for five million, uh -huh. I mean, people were squirting around because a guy named Homer Williams was going to. He was right. He was the, right. guy, he was he, the one he, for eight. He had the so-called expertise about uh, he, home, homelessness aspect. Mm -hmm. of, but then another friend of within that same within within the group, if you will business person, a guy by the name of uh, Jordan Snitzer, who knew him, because mm -hmm. I, I checked in and, and someone had said to me, say, Bruce, if you don't have no money, you can't talk to Wally mm -hmm. uh, Kehoe because he's about <laughs> the money. And so, but this was a friend of his because it's community. Mm -hmm. He knew him and he went to him and said, look, man, we got to do something about this piece because everybody's together. That's what I like about the process now. Mm -hmm. Then what happened is that he then got made a deal with Wally Kehoe to give it to him and then Jordan Snitzer, and then Jordan Snitzer basically brought Homer Williams in. Right. So now they get ready to proceed, and they, and this is going to be a private enterprise thing. Mm -hmm. And in all due respect, they just you got to find the overhead and things of that nature. But the county, that's why I'm running, because the county has to be involved because we we're going to need some extra bids, if you will, when people are overflowing. Right. You, you don't know what happened, but it costs a lot of money. And then secondly, we don't have any any opportunity to house, if you will, mental illness. That's another serious issue that we have throughout the entire state. But my point is to have those beds, if you will, and then all and all the other services. So my point is that the, all these other servicing entities mm -hmm. have all of a sudden start putting monies in on renting spots. Let's put it that way. Mm -hmm. But the idea is that the people that are involved now, they will have the overhead to make sure that it's done right. And then we can pick up all the people, vet them out, find out who's on the street, and direct them to the services that are there. They talked about transportation problems and things. But my point is that all those things now are on the table with some investors that are saying, we want to give back. Because the other thing, Bob, just on that same note, it's a nonprofit. So in the bottom line, a guy can give you a voucher for about three or four million bucks, if you will. I mean, some, some tax benefits that he can use to do this. So my point, but my point is that it's going to work out. That's what I'm saying. What I'm saying, all we have to do is just keep it on the table on the front of us, and that's one of the reasons why I want to run, and I'm going to keep it on the table, mm -hmm. on the front of it, as I think that, uh, unlike the present commissioners that are there now, they have no, uh, they, they have, they no, have no idea. They have no clue. No and, idea. That's a shame that you, in Multnomah County, you're electing people that don't understand yeah, yeah, politics. Yeah, 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 it's, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, and finance, and yeah, whatever, and, I mean, you, you think about it when, when well, I think they're very political. Yeah, very political. Well, they, well, like you well, said, look at the donors list. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> look at the donors list. <laughs> well, I don't. Uh, you I, look at the I would like to know what did have they made? What they, what have they brought to you from them and not from one of their donors? Yeah. That would be a good yeah. question to ask well, and to find out. Part of the problem is uh, I don't think there's anybody on the county that was even part of the, the when Wapato was oh, originally no. Uh, no. You know, no. went through all that process. So now they've got this. Kind of liability, and it's just costing mm -hmm. the money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, but uh, I'm I'm not uh, you know looking into it myself. I'm not the biggest fan of 
of just warehousing homeless people there. Right, 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 right. Because right, right, right. I, I think it's like. But, but, but it's not warehousing. My point is, it's a temporary housing. You first, the first thing we want to do is get the people off the street and vet them, find out who's on the street. I mean, sometimes you've got folks who have broken the law. You got this, you got this, you got this. Then you can start saying, okay, fine, you take them over here, you take them over here. We, we, got, we got housing downtown over here and this, that, and the other. But you got to do something. Right now, it's ridiculous. It, it's a health issue, big time. You got people that, I mean, they're, they're being treated worse than animals. So now we got the Humane Society. We don't have to worry about that problem anymore. But my point, take them off the street. We got the litter. In fact, there, there's no deterrent to prevent a person from, let's say, just just basically putting a tent and crap, Anywhere. On, and crap and this, that, and the other, and then just walking away. See, as far as we need to bring a litter law back in to, to a certain degree to justify, and this is just a thought, to justify picking the person up. That's a justification. Now you got him in there. They bro broke the, they, they broken the law. Then the idea is that you clean them up, because that's what we have to do. You clean them up, the showers, they get the medical, and, say, and then when they give them that uniform, I say, now you got to go out here and clean the stuff up. To a certain degree, that's a deterrent, well, See, just like they do the they, they do now. Well, I, I this morning I biked the Springwater Corridor, yeah. and I, I only oh. saw one camp remaining. Yeah, I went from Division and 205 bike path down, and then uh, where they meet, and then over all the way to Boring, and there was just one camp left. And normally, yeah. if I do that, there would have been a lot more. Yeah, but the summer's coming, my friend. Well, no, they clean they yeah. cleaned this up about a week and a half ago, two yeah. weeks ago. Yeah. Yeah. They they because they were. You go down 205, you hit Foster. That was a major tent city oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. on Foster oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, at the at the yeah, TriMet right. station right. there. Right. It was just unbelievable. And this is the thing that I don't understand. Uh, I mean, we used to have one uh, a rule in Portland. Uh, I don't know if it was written or what that in the morning you got to pack up and go. Yeah, yeah. And now people are just staying. Well, there's no deterrent. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, I'm saying because a lot of guys I've talked with say, "Well, gee, Bruce, I, hey man, I don't, I don't want no, I don't want no housing. I don't, want no, I just like it out here. Mm -hmm. I can just sit back here and folks will bring me Nikes and every so often. I can just stand up in line, get a Nike if I want to, and I can just hang out well, and get all the dope I want. I can get all the dope I want. Well, if I if I remember correctly, there's a, I think there's a federal uh, court decision which said that you can't actually kick people off the, st the street. Off the street. Unless right. you have enough beds. Right, 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 right. And, and that's just temporary beds. Yeah. But, mm -hmm. but I would rather they actually have permanent locations they can go right. to. But again, we got to still remember, you know, the whole, the whole, this whole country is built up from the standpoint of home ownership. At some point in time in my life, I like to own my own home. Mm -hmm. And I work my butt off. That's the motivation to go to work in the morning right. sometimes. But now if you take that out, then we got some real problems. We got situations now, and I've talked with folks with seniors. They're about ready to get kicked out of their house because they can't pay certain this, that, and the other. That are going to be homeless. See, so we got to really look at the whole situation completely. And that's the thing. It's nice to be caring, but the bottom line, when, like I said, when you go home, you don't have to worry about it. Right. You, know, you read about it in the papers. Oh, gee, that's sorry. It's, it's a sad situation. Well, look, we better not go to me. We, yeah. we got a politician. That, hey, you going to stick around, sir? You want to yeah. listen with the, the board? I mean, she's spending so much money. I think she got about 300000 I thought that. she had a quarter of a million. Uh, right, right I mean, uh, half a million. <laughs> you know. <laughs> who, who are the big donors? No, yeah, we'll, yeah. We'll find and, out. Yeah. Seth, Seth's going to sit around and look at you. <laughs> okay? All right. All right. Okay, Seth. Sounds good, buddy. Just going to take off. We're going to take a short break real quick, like, and then we'll come back and we'll mm -hmm. bring Deborah on. She's running for, for chair. County chair. Boy, that was Multnomah County Multnomah chair. Multnomah County chair. That's the head so, of everything. Something about it. a B word. I've never heard of that before. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm saying, I've heard some words, though. You are watching Oregon Voters Digest. This program can be seen again on these channels on these dates and times. Tell a friend.
Welcome back, folks. Now we're right back in the election time aspect of it. And by the way, we always do an equal time aspect of it. We've invited all kinds of folks, including uh, the, 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 the sitting chair, uh, Deborah Kafori, and, and others who are also running. But it's like anything else. You know, we, had a, we had a nice forum about a week ago, mm -hmm. and a lot of folks didn't show up. They didn't show up. Hmm. didn't show up because I was part and parcel of the team and the groups. There were three of us. If you will, just to kind of get the message out to, and all these specifically to African Americans, mm -hmm. and a lot of folks didn't show up. Okay, a really sad situation. But anyway, but here we have today. We have one of the ones who did show up. Her name was Deborah Harris. You can see it right there on the on the deal there. Vote May fifteenth, two thousand eighteen, Multnomah County Chair. Wow, look at that. Five zero three nine three six eight zero two zero. Deborah, Multnomah County Chair at Gmail dot com. Right. You got it. Did I do it right? Yes, a Bora Bora at AOL.com. Why I heard that? Look like a, like like the a, island. Uh, island. Bora Bora. Oh, I can't thought say that was a movie say. I saw that Bora Bora. <laughs> yeah. A lot of gunfire in that movie. Are we okay, yeah. buddy? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but you're non profit. You okay? Yes, that's exactly what That's right. That's exactly what the deal was. Yes. Okay, good. So, anyway, we got the Bora here, and we're going to spend a little time for her, and we're going to give her the time to give her platform speech. In terms of what, why is she running for office, and and uh, what, what uh, you know, and what are some of the things she wants to do? So we're just gonna let you have at it and just start talking. What? No, we don't ask questions. Until okay, I was just gonna say, just remember that good good candidates put it all in a box. Put it right. all in a okay. box. Yeah. Well, I must say, um, I was on a show about a month ago, and I was given 30 minutes. And I didn't have any paper, and I just talked and talked and talked. Hey, where did all that come from? Mm. But you did it. But I did it. There you go. <laughs> so today, um, I can, I plan to talk and talk and talk, but I intentionally uh, identified certain areas, and I put them on paper yeah. because I want to make sure that I cover everything that I want to cover within this period of time, especially since we're getting close to the crunch time exactly, here. Exactly. And do it real quick, like, yes. and the reason why I'm doing this is 15, the idea is that you can take that clip, if you will, and put it on your Facebook, yes. see, because it's going to be on YouTube. Right. So you could take that out and however you want to deal. So my point is that however you want to make your presentation, that's what we're talking about. Otherwise, we can, we can easily ask you questions <laughs> oh, yeah. to get you in the deal. Well, 15 is more than enough for me. You want to do 10? You want to do 10 and then, no. and then have a discussion with the oh, rest of them? We can do that. We Let's can do, do 10. That. And then okay. that way you, you can get okay. in the discussion, okay. but we're going to be talking about Multnomah County. <laughs> well, first of all, I'm going to identify myself again. I am Deborah Harris, mm -hmm. and I'm not saying I'm running, but I am claiming the position of Multnomah County Chair. Uh, I'm president of D. Harris Institute, LLC, um, Move Beyond Your Walls, Inc. I'm a diversity consultant, and I've had over two decades of working for a um, multi-million dollar corporation um, in Georgia, Oregon, and Southwest Washington. Mm -hmm. So I have a lot of business experience and background. Um, first of all, for Multnomah County Chair, the reason I'm my first, the reason I'm really running, running, running is to uh, build the public trust. Right now, there is no public trust, and if the public doesn't believe in government anymore, then regardless to who gets in office, they're going to have that same perception. Um, I want to take unconventional steps and share unconventional views. In general, folk tend to be afraid of the unknown. And I use candidates, for example, unknown candidates without a household name or without brand. And they also tend to be afraid of change and choose to accept conditions just the way they are. Mm -hmm. And that's called my famous word, fatalism, mm -hmm. just the way it is. It does not have to be that way. I do not put limits on my boundaries. There are many things that I can accomplish, and I take limits. I don't have limits on myself, mm -hmm. and I do not want the community nor the public to put limits on me, but allow me to move freely and work with the community, listen to the community, listen to the community, listen, 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 and see what their needs are, what their Very concerns are. Important. We have four districts in Multnomah County, and although each district have a lot of commonalities, uh, each district also has unique issues. So we need to um, look at those unique issues that each of the districts have. Mm -hmm. Now how can we build public trust? Ask me that question. How can we build public trust when the highest executive leadership for Multnomah County 
uh, Chair Deborah Kufuri called a community member a B, the B word. And it's so potent, <clears throat> it isn't in my vocabulary, mm -hmm. but the word is so potent that we don't have to say what the word is because mm -hmm. everybody knows what B is, mm -hmm. with B <coughs> and then four letters that follow. Mm -hmm. um, and it's also another, another term for B is a dog. Mm -hmm. And not only was this shared, but this was done in a public county meeting on taxpayers' dollars in front of well-meaning community members and other colleagues, elected officials, and it seems to not resonate. So it's sad, it's a shame, and it's ludicrous. Any other elected official, I know had I called someone a B, I would not be chair anymore. But I know there are certain laws that uh, still allow you to remain there. But they, on principles, the person should resign. Mm -hmm. It should resign. Because that's one way to gain that public respect is for that person to resign. And someone comes in with the new uh, values and respect for the uh, community. How can we build public trust when the current chair has acknowledged institutional racism? Hmm. Chair has acknowledged racism. If you'll go back to um, the public meeting, the county meeting, and it was December 12, 2014, hmm. Chair Kafuri addressed disparities issues and said, we're going to do things differently. It is now 2018 and she's still regurgitating, excuse the, language, the, the term, but she's still regurgitating mm -hmm. the same thing. In a forum April 8th of this year, um, in that particular forum, she said, if I'm reelected in 2019, you will see changes. But my question is, what's happening with the rest of 18? What happened between 2014 and 2018? So this is why there's no trust from the public because they see these things and candidates say the things and politicians over and over again, nothing's happening. Uh, how can you build trust when the highest executive level of Multnomah County said in an interview that we participate, we both participated in, and another uh, Mr. Crockett also was in that interview, uh, when the Willamette Weekly asked about institutional racism. She said, and we can roll the cameras, Willamette Weekly, she said, it's expected because it's happening in other states. <laughs> now this is in 2018, <laughs> so I sort of interject, I said, may I interject at this point? I asked Chair Kafuri, I said, so you're telling us that because uh, it, you're saying it's expected because it's in other states. I said, why can't Portland address the issue, uh, come to the table, and let's begin to work on this so we can be a model for other states. Mm -hmm. But it's basically, uh, it appears that she's saying, it's fatalism, this is just the way it is. Mm -hmm. So this from 2014, when she was elected, because prior to that she was placed in the position due to Kogan's, uh, whatever, move. move, demise, whatever you call it. Mm -hmm. uh, well, so maybe that's not the word, demise. <laughs> but uh, anyways, she was, uh, placed, placed in the position, and most times in candidates in positions, they don't have the knowledge of how to deal, of, how, of the understanding of uh, institutional racism, uh, disparities, uh, diversity, none of this. But because they are at the highest level, they assume, well, maybe those beneath me need to know. It needs to stop, begin from the top up, understanding how things work uh, for the best interest of the community. Um, we have seen the outcome of Multnomah County racial disparities with the analyst Amanda Lamb. She was abruptly fired for giving public presentation of her work identifying racial disparities that continue to uh, fuel distrust uh, throughout Multnomah County. Many others like Amanda Lamb, Tricia Tillman over the years have been pushed off the wall, intimidated off the wall, shoved off the wall, fired and have no recourse. Uh, I did offer some solutions. Some of the solutions I offered and pretty much I suggested, and I believe, um, I, I'm sure, I'm not gonna say I believe, Bruce, you did, and Sharon Maxwell did also, mm -hmm. creating an ombudsman. The ombudsman would be for union workers. So they would have a, they, are far, they would have a place, someone to file a complaint. Mm -hmm. uh, then resurrect the Merit Council, which Gladys McCoy, right. um, prior Gladys McCoy had in place. 
resurrect the merit council. So if a manager is fired, instead of pushed off the wall, okay, you're another one mm -hmm. who's bit the dust, mm -hmm. uh, uh, they would have a recourse. They'd be able to go um, to, if they can file a complaint against another manager or an elected official, and then uh, the merit council would go through the necessary process instead of just firing. None of those things have been taken into consideration. You would think uh, the late Gladys McCoy, um, been, uh, when was that, about 10 years ago? You would think that commissioners, especially the chair, would research, well, what was done before that made the situation better. So we're not interested in it. We're, they're so comfortable in their chairs, in their position, sitting in a position and watching people fall off the wall. And also the other issues that we're looking at that I really focus on is the elderly, the quality of life, mm -hmm. our children, our future, their education of dreams are evaporating, uh, the homeless, um, no place to lay their heads, mm -hmm. the uh, affordable housing, not just affordable housing, but a housing in a place where everybody knows your, knows your name, where you can take little Jenny to grandma's if, they, if you have to need uh, after child care instead of being... Um, Lucky. Key, lock key. Lock key. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. But those are those uh, some things. And often, in this, in this candidacy, I'm uh, getting ready to close and for you guys to pop yeah, in. In this candidacy, it, it's sad that every time we're saying, well, there's a black person in, there's people of color here. No, 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 no. What I'm saying, that's, that, yeah. Let me share this. My candidacy is not about the color of the skin I was birthed in. I have no choice of that. And I love it. I'm proud of it. And everyone should be proud of the skin they were birthed into mm -hmm. and the womb that they came out of. Mm -hmm. You should, should be proud of it, regardless right, of what right, color you are right, right. But, uh, or what gender I identify as. I want to be seen as a looked at view from the content of my character, mm -hmm. the content of my character that I bring to the position of Chair County. Unlike Chair Kafuri, I bring respect, not the B word. I bring accountability, sound knowledge and business sense, a passion for all people, good practices, values, and behaviors. And you have to have that. So often, right now, it appears that the commissioners are sitting behind their doors and they cannot get things together. When you are so busy uh, with your own personal issues, arguing about with each other, yeah. uh, having discourse there, how can you focus on the community? How can you see what can we do to help the communities to solve these problems? You're not going to find solutions because you're so busy and you're so entangled mm -hmm. within your personal. We're not paying you. Mm -hmm. We're not being paid to look at our personal issues mm -hmm. and call people different names and, and uh, make decisions just because you're, you don't like that person. Well, I'm gonna vote against this because you voted for this. It is sad, it is time out. Vote for Bora Harris. I am accountable. I have character. Uh, yes, I am a person of color, very much so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I'm in this race because of the content of my character and what I'm going to bring to the table. So I'm not just talk. I'm not um, attached to anyone. I don't have any chains on me. I'm not purchased by anyone. You know, I'm free for the community. Mm -hmm. okay. Sounds good. Sounds yeah. good. Sounds good, Laura. I, and I'm impressed with it, and that's one of the reasons why I wanted to, the viewing artists to get a better feel of who you were and just making a statement aspect of it. And I'm, I'm, I've heard it before, aspect of it. I've, uh, there are a couple of things that I will share with you. Is that one, like you, the observation that I've had since I've been involved in running for office, and I've been spending every Thursday there, and you've been there also too, yes. and just observing how the reaction in terms of how they deal with meetings. And in all due respect, is as if, they have no clue. And this one person is running the meeting, and in many ways, that person who's running the meeting is just gaveling, i.e. an agency head <laughs> position when they make the presentation. And that was it. Yes. Mm -hmm. you know, yes. And, and uh, well, we're not listening, you know. Uh, 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 for, for instance, now you can, I want you to share this with us. Uh, they have a foreclosure procedure that where when you, when you don't pay your tax and this, that, and the mm -hmm. county get these houses. Okay, and that's what developers are all excited about. You have to deal with the cash, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? but then at the same time, the county said, Well, look here, we're, we're short of housing for the poor, and this, that, and the other. Well, you said, Wait a minute, these guys are buying it to make money, 
and you're in need of housing, and so you have to raise the taxes on the other taxpayers, mm -hmm. and then blah, blah, when you can just keep that one, <laughs> and it's kind of like an inventory, so to speak, and you can do what you want to do with it, meaning that you can still make a profit and still meet your goals of housing. I mean, you're talking about buildings and things of that nature. A good, for instance, was the, with, the, with the courthouse, the present courthouse today. Let me show you something. These guys, they're all sitting there. And uh, so they're making the presentation. The guy from the agency is making the presentation about, we got to get rid of this building, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, they can't ask questions because they don't have the background. Mm -hmm. and, but they're just sitting there, and the guy's just making the statement. And then, and then it just so happened that I think it was... Uh, uh, well, I think it was David and I, we got up there and started asking questions to the, I, I got up there and said, well, wait a minute, uh, well, <laughs> how much is it? I mean, what you, what you asking for? <laughs> and then Loretta got involved in the process. Well, I don't have that number with me right now. <laughs> and then it was, uh, well, then, you know, then the suggestion, well, well, why are we selling it? I mean, I said, well, you know, the bottom line is that these people are not here bidding on this thing when they buy this thing cash mm. to lose money. No. They're here to make money and in yes. all due respect we're constantly asking the taxpayers for more money for this this that, that. almost like they're looking at wapato well, Bruce, with other people's money mm -hmm. what it is it appeared not it appears from what i've seen and the results yeah. of it we have people we have commissions at the table who are clueless yes that's right mm -hmm. and sometimes yeah. you know people tend to feel well i have to make decisions because yes. i'm in this position yes but even with the real estate deal and I did some research, and I did not see where one of the commissioners well, they, had yeah. any no. background, no. any yeah. history, no. any knowledge in real estate, but at the table and making decisions yeah. for our for our county. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, where is that yeah. account? You can't have yeah. accountability if you don't know what you're yeah. doing. It's huge. In fact, at the, at the end of the day, the guy who was making the presentation wanted to talk with me in the back <laughs> because he's trying to figure out how to cover my stuff because he got to eat, right? Mm -hmm. So he's trying to justification. And all I said was, and then we came back. I said, well, we agreed, so to speak. I said, in all due respect, you know, you're just going to sell it to someone. We could demand kind of an idea of what we want out of it. We, we're short for housing. Well, guess what we can do? It's downtown. Maybe you can build the thing up and put retail at the bottom and put housing on the top. Mm -hmm. To me, it's a very simple deal. And if you need the housing, the feds will come in. And they'll fund the thing almost all of it. Within. Now you, you've already met a criteria for housing, you got me, based on this. But as opposed to, guess what? What they gonna, what are we going to do? And so I said, well, look, I, I want to know what's going on. And, and they, they definitely wanted to know. They never, they never come back and say, okay, fine. One, this is how much we're going to be asking for it. One, that's one thing. And two... Uh, the idea was to look at the idea of possibly keeping the property mm -hmm. and all due respect. And developing hi it themselves. Hiring a consultant. Yeah. You know, get a rendering, if you will. Make a decision, if you will. And then say, boom, we're going to go on and do this thing. Cause we need, cause that's how many beds we need. Get together with the city. Mm -hmm. Make sure that that works together. As opposed to saying, okay, uh, our mayor, present mayor says, I need the money for the housing. And then that's not, we're not in that business. Right. We don't, we don't give out the permission. But rather than say, okay, fine, uh, well, just give us the money. You got the whopper to you're going to get $5 million. Well, you left $50 million on the table. You know what I'm saying? So we're going to give you $5 million and give it to the house. But what about, what about our issues over here? You get my point? Giving it to the city. So that's what I'm getting out of the, out of the whole thing. And, you know, all the um, reading from the paper, most of all, all of the commissioners are saying, are passing the blame. Well, we've got this problem because it happened in 2000 when they built right, it. It didn't right, need right. to, you right. know, that's the past. Yes, that's right. That's we right. need that's to right. put, we, that has already happened. That's right. That's X right. number of years ago. That's right. That's so right. if we're so set and, and focusing on the past, right. who didn't do what happened, uh, what they should have done, that's not the issue right, right now. That's right. That's so right. in order to move forward, we need to uh, define we know what the issues are. We've been right. talking about the issues right. over and over right. again. Right. So we need to become solution driven, right. not getting them saying these are the issues. The communities know, Multnomah right. County knows That's what right. the issues. That's so right. let's look at solutions and stop worrying about uh, the sheriff who he shouldn't have done this. You know, the voters voted for it. And the voters, when the voters uh, vote, as, same, uh, as Seth was talking about with the 87 percent, you know, let the county say amen when the voters yeah. vote. That's how it goes. Uh, but in this situation, they're all talking about, well, this person never should have done this. That's the past. What are you going to do right now in the present to move us into the future to take care of the issues? Go on, Bob. You know, I, You're interviewing us. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, 
you know, I'm listening to you two. Sure. And sure. one of the things I have to have to ask, over the last 10 years, have property gone up <laughs> or down? Up, oh, big time. It's huge. That if you is. if you spend fifty eight million dollars to develop a property, <laughs> what is the logic in selling this profit this property for five million dollars? I'm at a loss for this. I'm at a loss too. So I began to you know, smell, Bob. I said, if it smells like so, a skunk, it may be a skunk. That's number one. But number, uh, but I do have a real question for you because I just want the people to think about that and ask and ask themselves and their friends that question. Mm -hmm. But the other one is when you come with your ombudsman for union workers, mm -hmm. you're going to get a fight from the union yeah. because they represent those employees. Now, how do you see working that situation out? Okay, how do I see that, how uh, working that situation out mm -hmm. is uh, get with uh, the union, mm -hmm. have a discussion and listen to the union, share with them what the plan is and why it's happening. And plus, um, I would make this call to the, uh, to the union. It's, it's, nothing has happened so far. We've right. had the union years ago. The union has been in existence and people are still falling off the wall. The institutional racism is still there. The disparity is still there. So it appears it's time that the union needs to get together and we need to have some conversations, some good dialogue as to how, where are we going to go to help re, uh, remove these disparities. And then so that would be my conversation. And if the union says, oh yeah, we took care of it, well, so what is, I, I'm not disagreeing with the union um, being there for those County employees, mm -hmm. but it's been identified and it, it's and anal, analyzed and reports have done studies of it. Intense studies have shown that those are there. So whoever is in place to represent those employees, mm -hmm. whatever was supposed to happen hasn't been happening. Mm -hmm. So we're still falling off the wall. And then, Bob, I guess the other thing I would add, you know, it's always about the money. You see, the name of the game is that. I mean, how much is it going to cost me? <laughs> to do what you want to do, mm -hmm. and vice versa, how much is going to cost you to do what I want to do, in some way, shape, or form, and actually, as a, as a negotiator, I'll be thinking in terms of this time, I want to know what is it going to cost me, and I, my, my block routine, and how is it going to benefit us both. Right. The priority is going to be, I'm the owner. I want it to be benefit my folks that I'm representing, and since I'm representing poor folks, and I got these volumes of issues mm -hmm. that I have to deal with, that has to be a major factor aspect of it because everybody's got to eat. We recognize that. Yes, yes, yes. But the bottom line is too often what happens, if you don't know, if you don't understand that just that simple kind of relationship aspect of it, the people who represent the county right now can't represent because they don't understand the bottom line. A good for instance mm -hmm. of that is like the so-called uh, uh, the, the, the apprenticeship program. Mm -hmm. I mean, the apprenticeship program <laughs> and the pre-apprentice. Pre -apprentice, and you know and I know we've been working in this union stuff for years. There's no such animal as, as a pre-apprentice. Pre -apprentice. Pre -apprentice. It's either apprentice or it's not. Right. And most of those people that are sitting up there and they went through that exercise, <laughs> they, they went through that whole deal about apprentice, and all of a sudden, awarding them money, awarding them the union money mm -hmm. for the pre-apprentice. What is that? I, I'm just it's saying, no just, they just gave them the money. <laughs> they had the, they had the union rep there, talking about the preference, and and they and they got the the person who was responsible saying, okay, fine, the deal was made. Okay, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna give you money to do this. And I'm just saying, and no one said nothing. And I'm just and, saying, wait a minute. And bringing people people in, it says this is a this is an apprentice here, but you're doing just general labor, picking up scraps and so forth. You, know, you have to go to the work site and do what the, what the foreman tell you, but you're not learning to use the learning, tools of the learning. trade. And also, free apprentice. Yeah. So you 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 yeah. you're the janitor. Been around. See, it's been it came up to really to in response to the affirmative action thing. That's what it was, and there was nobody there to talk. Mm -hmm. Looked like we got about two. minutes. This has been good. But see, yeah. Yeah. Time, time flies back. when you're having yeah, fun. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we got about we got about another minute. <laughs> yeah. well, well, when we talk about the union, we're having a dialogue with the union. Questions I would have: Sometimes leadership of unions don't necessarily do what the workers want done. Right. I would look at it as an instance: How can a person? We should get into that. How can a person get union support and endorsement before? 
Okay. It's time. But, but my point I is, wish so. I had time to explain to you guys about unions no, and their I, endorsements. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 you know, I, I, one of the, I been served. There, and I've been yeah. there. I've been there. Yeah. been there big time. But my point is that we got about a minute or so. Yeah. Announce your, your, your number. Put your, put your phone number out there in terms of who you are. Deborah Harris on the ballot. You. I'm number two on the ballot. D B O R A Harris. Okay. 503 936 8020. Sounds great. Bora Bora That's with right. it. At AOL.com. That's right. And Thank you. Got, you. And you got a county commissioner sitting right here, mm -hmm. district number two. His name is Bruce Broussard. Bruce Broussard. Bruce Broussard. And we'll have them negotiate. Bob will be on this side for the union, but he knows I can deal. <laughs> yeah. Well, I just want to say quick, to, to quick, everyone, don't just read your voters pamphlet. There you go. Pick up that ballot. Take it off the refrigerator. Fill it out. And send it in. Send it go. in. Very you important. said right. Very we can't important. talk about change if we're not being the one to make the change. Good. Folks, this has been just great. This has been great. Yes. I think we've covered quite a material. Yes. And hopefully next week, we're going to have the other commissioners that are going to be sitting here, and we're going to be changing them out. We're going to be talking about responsibility and who has the resume and who doesn't. That's the key. Okay? Mm -hmm. So with that, folks, I want to thank you very much for being with us. And don't forget now, don't forget, vote Bruce Broussard, County Commissioner. Bora Harris. Number two. Well, look at that. <laughs> I mean, see how nice I am? Yeah. I'm being very open, but you'd be the County Commissioner. Send so, in the ballot. Send in the ballot. You vote for Bruce, right? You got that? Vote for Bruce, send, send in the ballot. Vote for Deborah, send in the ballot. Thank you so much. Have a good one. Hey folks, I'm Bruce Broussard, and as you might know, I'm running to be your next county commissioner, but I will continue to host our Oregon Voters Digest and will likely share my views on important issues here. And since this is going to be a very important election year for everyone, I'm opening this platform for other political candidates to share their views too. So if whether you're also running for Multnomah County Commissioner or if you are going to be on the ballot in any other position in our viewing area, you are welcome to come on this show and tell us of what you are all about. This is an open invitation to anyone running for any office in the Portland area. We broadcast our show live every Sunday afternoon here in Northeast Portland and would love to share the stage with you. If you're interested, send us an email at ovdguests at gmail.com. The email should be displayed on your screen now. So, come on down. Write me an email and tell me who you are, what position you're running for, and maybe a little about yourself. Again, our email is ovdguess at gmail.com. Even if you're not running for office, be sure to stay tuned over the next several months. You're going to want to know how your candidates stand on the issues and how they plan to represent you. Have a great week, folks. Everybody, I love you. Take care.